What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods 7 to the Sky. Guys, we are here in the other once again. Am I even hitting anything? I don't think I'm hitting anything. You die now. Die. Why are you not dying? What the heck? Oh, I pressed the wrong button there. Uh, this one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we are back. We are back in the other. And this is... This is the structure that we kind of visited that had a whole bunch of spawners. I've kind of gone through now and removed all of the spawners that were around. In fact, these towers up here, we go all the way up. These had a bunch of spawners in them. And I've gone through, I think, two, maybe three of them. Not all of them, but I've removed the spawners. But I noticed at the top of these things that I was hearing Vindicators, I think. Uh, so I came into here and there was uh, two spawners per corner. There was a total of eight spawners in here. And each one of these towers had two blocks of netherite ingots, right? Or the netherite block. You can see all these spawners that are in there. Um, anyway, so I just went underground here and I saw that there was like a lower section. <laughs> yeah, so if you follow this down, there is lower stuff down here. So this is what I've been doing. You see there's a whole bunch of mobs. I have not been down here yet, so I don't know what to expect. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening. So let's just try and get rid of all these guys. There must be a oh, there's spawners underneath these. Um, I think this is where you get to the pig liches. That's why I'm back here because that's what I'm trying to find. Uh, but let's keep going down. See what we come up with. Get rid of all these guys. These are uh, super easy to kill now that we have an unobtainium sword. I'm assuming more spawners. Yeah, let's get rid of these. All right, keep going. Oh, this goes down quite far. I hear more skeletons around. Oh, we got these guys. You're, you're dead. You're dead. Okay, I think we should be fine as far as our health goes and our protection and all this. There is so much stuff happening. Oh my goodness, what is this? All right, let's just run around and light this up, I guess. Wither skeleton. Oh, there is so much stuff here. Maybe running around wasn't the best idea. <laughs> okay. There's a spawner here. I want to get rid of that. Ooh, boy. There is a lot of stuff here. There's even an upstairs. The spider jockey's happening. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Voluntary exile. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you know, I was a little, I was a little taken aback previously by how much damage this sword does. Now I understand why. Knowledge of death from four to five. Let's go. Is that good? I don't know. Yo, I did not think that this was going to be as extensive as it is. There must be something here. Oh, there's a ladder down. Okay. Looks like we're at a quiet moment here. Nothing else is attacking us. Uh, let's go ahead and clear the inventory. Reward, bag of seeds. We'll have to check those out a little bit later. Got some more gems and stuff. That's kind of cool. Totems of Undying. Those are things we haven't had yet. Oh, I didn't mean to put those. Alright, that can be thrown away and that can be thrown away. I did not mean to put my torches away. That's unfortunate. Okay, so what's down here? More stuff. It's... Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is uh this is chaotic. This is absolutely chaotic. What are you? That's a wither skeleton spawner with more of these guys back there. I don't even know where this like begins and where it ends. There's just this dungeon is just like crazy. Now we got all sorts of vexes after us. How's our health? Our health is fine, it looks like. There's an upper level with more spawners. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't know what to expect when I first came into here. This is not, this is definitely not what I expected. Just to be swarms of mobs. Can't see anything. Gotta light everything up. Wow. I, okay, so I did see that there were chests earlier. I am kind of interested in knowing what's in the chests. Alright, alright. Get rid of you guys. All of you. You gotta go. Too much. 
You guys are done. Get rid of that spawner. Okay, okay. My goodness, the amount of spawners and mobs in here is just crazy. Let's make sure we're keeping our health up. Uh, so another thing that I have done is I made myself an enchantment extractor. And I have extracted mending from all like the different weapons and tools and things that we've gotten from the end. A lot of those just come with mending on it, which is awesome. But yeah, I've applied mending to all of our stuff, including our bow, which is in my offhand right now. Uh, that way we're not breaking those. Oh my goodness, just floor after floor of these guys, huh? I need sweeping edge for this sword. Okay, those guys are done. Alright, what's in this chest? All the modium nugget. Potato recovery? I have no idea what that is. Wow, all the totems of undying. Okay. All of them. Literally every last totem of undying. <laughs> That's great. Okay. And then these weapons. Yeah, those are just trash. Alright, we'll take these chests. Let's continue on here. Oh, I'm out of torches. Okay, slash home. I'll grab that stack of torches that I accidentally put in here. Actually, I can just make a few more stacks and slash back. We go back again. All right. So we're at the top level of this. I'm hearing things. Yep, yep, even more. Okay, we've been here, it looks like. More chests. Uh, those aren't bad. Plus three luck. Alright, well, let's just go ahead and take this chest. Uh, what do we got here? Unbreaking sharpness, bean of illagers. Gold nuggets. Alright, alright, we'll take those as well. Couple more chests here. Some vibranium nuggets. Channeling, shield bash, sharpness. Okay. Vex, get out of here. You bother me. Uh, let's put these things away. What's this chest plate? Fire protection, rebounding mana boost. Total speed, just a little bit of speed. Okay. And then this sword, sharpness capturing soul reaper. Ooh, that's actually not bad. So we'll go ahead and hold on to that one. Let's see what else we got. I think we already looked in here. Soul reaper, that's good. Severing. All right, take that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Get rid of the spawner. All right. I think we're good. So two more chests. What do we got here? Shadow step 12. Reduces your distance from which creatures detect you when you're stealthed. Oh, okay. I don't know how to stealth. Wait, what was the other one? Severing capacity mana boost. All right, it's not bad. And in this one. Mana regen, fire protection, blast. Blast, Soul Reaper, Splitting, Loyalty, and Breaking, and more all the Modium Nuggets. All right. Lots of loot. Well, I guess I'm just going to continue on through this and just get all the loot. All right, guys. So we got quite a haul of different enchantment, enchanted books and enchanted armor from that dungeon. But honestly, there really wasn't a whole lot of other stuff there to find. Um... Yeah, so I've been growing some sugarcane here using the Snad and the Observer Clock like we did early on in the series just to reset this up so I can make some more, uh, make more paper so I can make some more books. So that's what I got going on over here. And then, uh, let's see what else. Yeah, the uh, enchanted books that we have been collecting, I'm splitting apart right now into separate enchantments so they can stack together. Otherwise, a great number of these books that we had yeah, they had multiple enchantments on them, so they would never stack. And then, yeah, that would take up all sorts of space in our applied energistic system. And besides, we don't want to waste enchantments. If we have, like, sharpness 5 plus, I don't know, three other enchantments on there, we want to put that on a sword. It would just be a waste of those other enchantments unless we had them all split apart. So, yeah, we're just kind of going through this, splitting apart all the different enchantments that we have. Uh, and the ones that are the same will stack, so that'll be pretty nice for later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I'll just go ahead and continue doing that. And then, uh, also we had 
a bunch of armor pieces here that I'm going to go ahead and remove all the enchantments from as well. All right, guys, so now that we have a whole bunch of enchanted books separated from what they were enchanted on, I am trying to place stuff onto this unobtainium sword and make it really good. You can see we got a lot of good stuff on there right now. Severing six, looting three, sweeping edge five, sharpness six, soul reaper four, capturing five. A lot of good things. I do want to put this looting six on here. In order to do that, though, it is costing 76 levels to put that on. So yeah, we are slowly gaining XP. I think we're going to have enough XP here to do this without worry at all. So yeah, 76 levels and then I can do this one. And then I wanted to put Frostbite on there. Frostbite 8 has a chance to freeze enemies on hit. This one says it's going to cost 79. So <laughs> I don't know if it's going to cost even more after I upgrade our looting to 6 from 3. Uh, we'll find out. But anyway, yeah, I got to sit here and wait for this to happen. It's going to take a little bit of time. We'll be back. So after putting that last enchantment on our sword here, getting that looting six, if we want to put a frostbite eight on there, that's going to cost us 143 levels. Oh no. I decided that's a little bit too expensive to throw our XP at right now. We might do this at some point in the future. There might be a way we can get the cost down. Like if I remove the enchantments, uh, like on a uh, grindstone, the sword, for instance, and then combine the enchantments together and then like, put it in a, put them on the sword in a different way. But that's a lot of work and I'm not really that concerned about trying to get this frostbite on there. I think our sword is good enough as it is now. Right, so some time has passed since that last clip, but I did go ahead and I made this enchantment applicator. I tried placing the frostbite eight onto our unobtainium sword doing this and I filled this up full of our liquid XP that we have stored over over here, right? I tried filling that up and no matter, even if this was completely full of it, it was still will not go. So I don't know if that was the wrong stuff, if this has to be essence or not. It allowed me to put the liquid XP in here, so I assume that works. Uh, but maybe this just costs way too much for it. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and leave the sword alone for now, like I was talking about last time. Uh, we ended up getting this unobtainium, right? And w the reason why we went after this was so we could get this infinity range booster. So now we have everything we need in order to make this thing. Boom. There it is. Task completed infinity range booster. So that means we can grab this wireless crafting terminal and we can throw this in here, I assume. Oh, yep, just goes right into one of these slots, it looks like. All right, so now we need to see if this works. So I don't know if this works cross dimension. I assume it does, but maybe it doesn't. Let's find out. Let's go into the nether. And oh, it says wireless out of range. Oh, interesting. So this does not work cross dimension. Um. Let me try getting pretty far away. Right here. Out of range. So maybe I have done something wrong with this infinity range booster because it is not working as I would expect it to. Huh. Okay. So AE infinity booster. We have two different cards here. Oh, there's a dimension card as well as this one. So what is the dimension card? So that is... Four of the infinity range boosters. Okay. Well, I would have expected this infinity range booster if it's in the correct spot on this terminal. I don't have to like shift right click this or something, do I? No. Uh, I would expect that to be in this slot and to allow me to use this terminal from like far away. So there must be something that I'm missing here with this. I'm going to go ahead and do some research and try and figure that out. Yeah, no research needed. I literally just came downstairs, saw this thing looks just like this one, and boom. <laughs> okay, so this works at 9.22337203 e to the 17 meters. So basically, that's infinity. All right, so that's what I was missing. You don't put it into the terminal. The reason why I've done that is because in the past, when I've had infinity range boosters, that goes on the actual terminal itself not the wireless access point. Yeah, so now we can use this thing like everywhere. So that's great. Um, I don't know if the dimension one works just the same, but then it works cross dimension or if it has a limited range. I assume it would have to be the same unlimited. So 
It looks like since we've made one of those, we're going to have to make three more, and then we need some nether stars. I don't think we have collected nether stars yet, have we? We have no nether stars, so that would be something for the future. But for right now, uh, just using the wireless terminal whenever we want to throughout our base, or if we want to like go real far away from the base, that's awesome. All right, so I found out that you can bind your wireless crafting terminal to a key, so you don't actually have to have it on your hotbar. I was thinking you might be able to put it into one of your bobble slots over here, but it does not fit into any single one of these, and it doesn't say it's a bobble on it, unlike the uh, bronze jetpack that says slot body, for instance, right? So yeah, you can't place it in a bobble slot, but I can bind it to a key, so I can just press X is what I have it bound to, and then I'll open up the terminal whenever I want, so that is pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to revisit this mod here, FTB Industrial Contraptions. We've been working on this a little bit on and off throughout these episodes. Um, but yeah, in order to do what we wanted to do for Endgame here, we had to make the HV, was it? Uh, the EV solar panel, and that's to make this Nexium emitter. And we got up to the MV one, and the MV ones are used in this recipe here, but then we needed some other things, including graphene, advanced machine block, and iridium circuit. I think the iridium circuit is kind of what... Uh, through us for a loop here. So this is going to require more graphene, which I assume is pretty easy. Compress coal ball, coal ball, bunch of coal around flint. Yeah, okay. So that's like fairly simple and that goes around obsidian. That's like standard IC2 stuff. I think this used to be called compressed coal or something in that mod. Anyway, um, but iridium alloy is where we are kind of stuck at at the moment. So in order to get iridium, uh, we need, I guess it showed right here. Yeah, so you can mine it in the other, you can mine it in the nether, and you can mine it in the end from Y level 5 to 69, and you get one iridium ingot. So it has EMC, and that's probably where we'd go in the future, but I did see that there was another way to obtain iridium, and I'm kind of interested in checking this out. So there is an iridium B, right? So it says to acquire this B, look up the crafting recipe for its spawn egg. And this is the spawn egg right here, iridium B spawn egg. So in order to make the iridium B, we have to have the spawn egg. And in order to make the spawn egg, we need to do this canning recipe, which is again, using the same mod that I want to progress in. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, we have to have a crystalline B spawn egg plus an iridium ingot, can that together, and that makes the B spawn egg. I assume we'd have to make two of these, and then we'd be able to breed them and make more? That's my guess. I didn't see if we can breed these or not. If we look at the uses on here, advanced, maybe we should. Flowering, productive, it does not actually look like you can breed them. No, I think we have to spawn in each individual one. Okay, so that's good to know. So, to get Crystalline B spawn egg to make this, we have to have an incubation, a B incubator, with a regular chicken egg. We need a honey treat that has productive bees Crystalline 100% genes in it, and then that turns into this. So, this is the next step here, is to get this Crystalline B gene sample. I have no idea how to do that. So, I was looking in the quest book here, and we have the B incubator, we have the gene indexer, we have a B jar, which I think we've seen, or maybe we've used something else, oops, I didn't mean to pin that. Then we also have this catcher, bee catcher. Use to catch bees that are flying around it. You can use a filter up key to filter out which bees you want to catch. Actually, that's pretty nice, I didn't know you could do this. Uh, so the gene indexer, when collecting genes, okay, so when collecting genes, you'll get a percentage of a trait. You can combine them in a crafting table, to add them together or place them in a gene indexer to auto combine. I don't know if this is how you get the genes. There, I don't see a gene extractor. Maybe this does both, I don't know. And then there's also the incubator and this is what we need to apply the genes. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this thing. This doesn't look super expensive. So let's just go ahead and see if we can craft this. We have the crafting table on auto craft, but we do not have the redstone comparator, but we can craft one of those and then we can craft this now. Okay, so gene indexer, let's just plop this down and see what it looks like. Oh, this doesn't look like anything. So how do we get the genes? Productive gene. Pokey pokey gene sampler. You slowly extract genes from visiting bees, totally not hurting them in the process. Multiple upgrades can be installed for a greater chance. 
Does it say what this is used in? Is this just used in a hive? Do you just put this in like their regular hives and then it does that? Honey generator gene indexer. Okay, well, how expensive is this? This is honey bottles, combs, swords, and the upgrade base. We can do all of these things. So, hmm, we'll leave that there for now. Let's go look at one of these hives over here real quick. Yeah, I wonder if that's what you're supposed to do. You put those into the hive here, and as the bees work, they have a chance of producing uh, the gene sample. Okay, but well, we do have an empty hive here, and we need to get ourselves crystalline bees. So I think that's the very first thing that we should work on. Uh, so let's go back to... Can I not press up? There we go. Uh, the iridium comes from this one. This one comes from the crystalline bee. Crystalline bee... Uh, does not show, okay, crystalline B, that comes from a quartz nest, and the quartz nest attracts bees near it. How do you make it? So you make a nether quartz ore with a sword, so we need to get ourselves nether quartz ore. How do we get nether quartz ore? <laughs> That's another thing. So we can set up a mining laser, world gen in the nether. Combiner, so quartz dust plus netherrack in a combiner. This is a mechanism machine. That's probably what we're gonna do. Okay, so we need to make ourselves a combiner. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I made a combiner, and I fully upgraded with eight speed upgrades, and we have eight energy upgrades in here. So it is fourteen quartz per one netherrack to make a nether quartz ore. And there is four nether quartz ore. That's pretty simple. And this combiner, as we saw the recipe. Not that bad. We have basically everything on auto craft here. So that was real simple. So then we got to combine these with iron swords. All right, so let's make some iron swords. I don't remember if the sword gets used in the recipe. I think it does, but that's fine. Iron is cheap. Sticks are cheap. And then we do this and this. Oh yeah, that does get combined. Okay. So we have four of those. Now, since these are nether quartz, I assume this has to be done in the nether, and then we're going to need the honey treats, I think, is what we needed to spawn these in before. Uh, let's bookmark that and the recipe to make more honey treats. Yeah, we'll just make a bunch of those. Okay, so that should be enough. And then I am also going to want, what are these things called? Bee cages? Bee cage. How do we make the bee cage? So that is planks plus honey bottle, and we should have... Oh, we don't have any planks. Oak plank will make some of that. I made four. Oh, okay, so the honey bottle. Yeah, the honey bottle, since it turns into an empty one, kind of like messes up. There we go. Now we got 36 of those, more than enough. So next step is we go into the nether and then we place these hives down. I think we feed the hives the treats, which should start attracting the bees. And I think it's a countdown timer. We did this once before for the glowstone bees and I don't remember how this goes. Let me go ahead and remove this. We'll place these down. Okay. And I do the honey treat. Okay, so it's kind of like you're feeding a baby animal to like adulthood. We'll just go ahead and spam a bunch of these in here. Since we have plenty, I can always make more. Yeah, I think that's good. So, right, so about three minutes from now, we should get some bees to populate. All right, guys, so all four bees came out of the hive. And then I have made four of these pokey pokey gene samplers and I have put them in the hive here. The sun is just about to come up. Right? And yeah, these bees are about to get pokey pokeyed, I assume. I don't know how this works. Are we going to get genes immediately or do they have to go in and out a few times? These are things that we're about to find out. Uh, one thing I do know, though, is I ran out of this clear glass. So now I have a regular piece of glass in here and sealing it up. And then I also did make another uh, nether quartz ore so I could place in the floor down here. So these bees have something to get pollen from. Yeah, so we're about to see how this works. Um, okay, I guess what we need to do is just come into here and see if we got any genes. I don't see any. All right, so 
I assume it, it might be like after they pollen and they do work in there since they didn't get any pollen previously It might be after they pollinate that the gene sample works. I'll let this run for a little while. We'll find out Yeah, so I just realized that there was an upgrade here upgrade block that changes the produce output to blocks instead of chips for lumber and quarry bees Mm-hmm yeah, so our lumber bees now produce, I think it's 10 oak logs every time they come out of the hive, which is really great. And there's also upgrades that we can further enhance this, I do believe. But that is going to require, yeah, this productivity. And that requires a draconic chunk and draconic dust, which comes from the draconic comb, which comes from draconic bees, which we haven't done yet. So we can look at this in the future if we want to uh, speed this up. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty good. So uh, our bees over here are crystalline bees I did put in for these pokey pokey gene sampler things and they have been going for a while now I've been kind of like afking a little bit and if we take a look over here at the Genes you can see we got quite a bit of different ones here And these aren't costing us anything like these are just coming out of the hive automatically because of those upgrades uh, So we have weather tolerance normal for temper uh medium for endurance normal weather tolerance medium high for productivity i assume this makes the bees like produce more stuff as they leave the hive like instead of doing one honey level they need two or something not entirely sure how all that works and then i did see that we got one productivity bees crystalline at one percent <laughs> okay so yeah i do believe we needed a hundred percent to put that on the honey treat in order to make the the bee right so this is not going to be a fast process. This is going to be really slow. In fact, I don't know what the best way to go about doing this is other than just making a whole bunch of hives with all these bees and those upgrades in it to try and speed up that process. Maybe there's a way that we can take uh, that gene that we got somehow and like increase the percentage. I don't know. I'll have to look at this mod a little bit more to find out about all of that stuff. But yeah, I am. Uh, I think we're on our way with the bees here. We're probably going to leave that alone for a little while. Um, I did go ahead and remove our chip drawer that we had here and I replace it with uh, the oak logs to convert all the chips into the logs, put them in there. And now this is where we're storing all of our logs. So now we have over 1000 wood. We don't have to worry about that for a while, which is great. And then this guy here. Yeah, I'm not really sure. This is an indexer and it says that it automatically will well, yeah, let's go into our terminal here. It said it automatically combine things, so maybe we should just store them in there. Let's see how this thing works. So if I put these in here, we have two of the same one, and it is not combining. I'm not sure how this works. Put all these in here. Yeah, I guess this is just storage for it. Not really entirely sure what this is doing for us, other than just storing them in here. I guess we could store them in here instead of our... Uh, a, digital storage that's fine by me um, but yeah I think we are going to go ahead and wrap it up here for today guys yes we got a lot of good stuff happening here uh, exploring that dungeon in the other definitely a lot of fun very overwhelming not sure if we're gonna do more of that uh, but we did not find what I was looking for why I originally went back there <laughs> to get those lich things so we'll have to figure out what I did wrong as far as that goes next time. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.